talking today to Ingrid Martins, who is the documentary maker who has made Africa Shafted Under One Roof. Ingrid, what's the documentary about? The documentary is really, uh, it was an uh, opportunity for me to share my travels from across the continent. Um, you know, I've been to about, sure I'm not even halfway, but maybe about 28 countries on the continent, which is my passion to tell stories across Africa. And um, I must say, I was even too scared to go downtown Johannesburg specifically to this building because it was known as one of the most dangerous places in Johannesburg. And what is the building? It's called um, uh, Ponty Towers. Um, so I eventually got the courage and went down there and found out that it was exactly the same as anywhere I go on the continent. In, in fact, it was one of the residents called it the building of the Organization of African Unity or Union. Yeah. Uh, in fact, Unity, because he, uh, it really is. It was, yeah. As I said, it was like Lagos or Kigali or anywhere else. But so it contains kind of roof. every nationality. Of Absolutely every nationality yeah. from every corner of Africa. Yeah. Which made it really exciting being under being the ta tallest apartment building in Africa. Yeah. And so the documentary simply talks to the residents about their experience of being a foreigner in South Africa. And what is that experience like? Well, it, it does weigh more than that because really my idea was not, it, it, it was to, I used a different kind of way of telling the film in that I rode the lifts uh, for mm. on and off for two years and I got to know the residents and it actually became a vehicle for them to, they created a relationship with the camera where they actually start talking to you about how they love their home and, mm. you know, what their people uh, stand for and, you know, their symbol what they symbolize in Africa or, you know, the hard economic realities on the continent or why, you know, they'll only go home when their president is kicked out or, you know, what it's like to be in love, mm. <laughs> you know, from every level so every of So every part of life. Every part of life. Yeah. And th that was the conversation. So, you know, it really uh, only when, um, you're, if you get to see the film, when the lift starts breaking down and people start blaming the foreigners, mm. that that conversation then starts coming out about Mm. being foreign but before that you actually see that this was one place that they felt incredibly so safe mm. in the you know the building of uh, the organization of African unity so it was just an element of the film and how was the documentary financed it was personally funded so it really was my passion project mm. and in fact I have to actually acknowledge someone from the UK it was a young student in Poland I saw a short film um, where he actually used this film concept about 10 years ago. Mm. Mark Isaacs, he's got a credit in the film. Okay. And he used it, um, he won an award for it as a student film. It was about a 10 minute film called The Lift mm. and what, uh, downtown London. And mm. what was interesting about it is that people were so depressed and grey. Mm. Um, and it took me so long because I actually filmed in and out of the building mm. and I had to go back and use his concept because it allowed me the opportunity to force people not to look at people as poor or, mm. you know, living in, because we used mm. to call that building the, the five-star refugee camp. Yeah. You actually are forced to look at them one-on-one -on -one as human beings. Mm. Um, so, but I have to credit Mark Isaacs, mm. it was a great concept, but it just translated so beautifully in Africa because of the colour and the laughter mm. and the, yeah, the absolute beauty. And it's been shown in various festivals. Tell me which festivals. The first one was the African World Documentary Film Festival, so it went from Barbados to Cameroon to the US. Um, the second one was the Durban International Film Festival, and then the most recent is the Tri-Continental Film Festival, which is a human rights mm. documentary film festival, so yes. And has it won any prizes yet? No, it hasn't. No, oh, not yet. Not yet. We, we wait uh, for that moment. <laughs> yeah. I, I, maybe some more finishing funds. Yes. <laughs> Post-production. <laughs> and how will you distribute it? Well, I'm really passionate about reaching as many young people in South Africa because I think it should be a tool. Um, and there is a lot of um, willingness to make sure this gets to schools with facilitators um, talking about these issues that we are not talking about. You know, why is it we have this serious issue of xenophobia? Mm. Um, why do we not understand each other better? Why mm. is South Africa being called the Africa or the America of Africa? Mm. Um, and unpacking those concepts, you know, the notion that 
they come and they take our wives, they come mm. and they take our jobs. You know, but I would love to use the Ponte because a lot of the Ponte residents mm. have come to some of the screenings and I'd love them to be part of this process where they go and talk to young people. So that's one level. Um, the other level is actually the music is incredible. It's largely what I've found in my mm. travels across the continent. And all of those people are, or musicians that have, you know, willingly given this music or contributed to this music, they also have a very important story to tell. And I hope that can be used in educational purposes. Mm. But also, of course, our public service broadcasters and other public service broadcasters across the continent. But there has been international interest too. So with that ambition, you're, you're hoping then that it will be the public broadcasters that may pick up this the program and use it. Yes, I yeah. do. I just have to find the right distribution model. Look, everyone wants it. I'm just, um, I'm, I, I just haven't quite figured out the next step. Okay. I'm signing it over. <laughs> Thanks for talking to us today. Thank you very much.